and we welcome you to another edition of Center Ice, a look at the season for the UConn men's ice hockey team. Hi, everybody. I'm Jody Ambrosio with the head coach of the Huskies, Mike Cavanaugh. And coach, about two-thirds of the season is over. Um, if you were going to grade your team, if you were Professor Cavanaugh on the overall body of work, how would you grade them? Geez, that's a good question, Joe. I think the thing that's holding us back from having a really solid grade is our consistency. I think that, uh, you know, we went through some tough times early in the year, and uh, we fought through those and, and had a great weekend to finish the season, you know, with Lowell and, and a pretty good game with Merrimack. Uh, we had a seven-game road trip to start the second uh, part of the year. We go 3-3-1 three, three, and one on that. But then, I think since then, it's been, you know, an okay game, a great game against Boston College, uh, an average game against Sacred Heart. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, effort, right. not so much um, an effort and mental awareness, not so much, uh, you know, wins and losses. And so I think that, you know, probably a B minus, uh, and, but we need to really ramp it up and get more towards the B plus and trend towards that A minus yeah. as we get into the playoffs. Those are letters I wasn't familiar with in school, so you'll have to explain <laughs> yeah, those Yeah, I went to, to pass me. fail at Bowdoin. You've, so. got, you've got, yeah, but that's Bowdoin. Yeah. You've got a young team. We know how the freshmen have done. Max Latoon of Tage Thompson have been great. How would you grade how your freshmen have progressed all season long? Not necessarily a letter grade, Mike, but just how, yeah. how have you liked their progress from the beginning of the season to now? I think it's been pretty good. I really do. I think where you see a kid like Tage, who wasn't even on a barometer, might be the central scouting, you know, the NHL right. central scouting. He's not even on the sheet to start the year, and now he's an A player. And I think a lot of that's uh, credit to him. He, I think he came in a little bit immature, and he's really uh, been coachable. He's listened to a lot of the input we've given him, and he has worked hard in the weight room, and he competes every single night. And you see that a lot of his hard work gets rewarded uh, on the stat sheet every night, too. And I think Max Latunov also has, has gone from where he was a little bit inconsistent as a player in the first half. He'd right. be good one night and okay the next, where the second half, he's been pretty good every single night. You know, And then we have some other guys... Uh, that are, are growing into their roles, but they, they are freshmen. Um, so, but overall, I think their development as a class has been pretty good. Latuno coming off his third two goal, uh, multiple goal game of the season in the loss against Sacred Heart. I, it would be unfair not to talk about the injuries that have struck your team over the last three year, oh, three weeks, starting with your goalie, Robbie Nichols. Uh, Kasperio Yutankinen has been out for a while. Max Calter's out. Uh, David Drake and Corey Ronan got hurt in the in the same game against Vermont. Um, trying to piece things together. I mean, I don't remember seeing anybody have to skate one player under the limit as you did in the Sacred Heart. And not to use that as an excuse cap for the effort, because you said that in the post-game press conference. But it's still, it's hard to piece things together that way. Uh, it can get, and you know, mentally, I think it's more mentally draining on the kids, but... It's another thing that you have to fight through. Right. It, it happens. And uh, unfortunately, we're going through a really rough stretch right now. You know, Jeff White's another kid who's right. been playing great for us. He's our best face-off guy. He's a big, strong body that kills penalties. I think that's where you really see it take the toll on your team is when special teams hit. Because you can play three lines all game if there's not any penalties. But what happens is, you know, Latunov and Thompson and Pauly and Kirtland kill penalties. Right. They're also on the power play. So... When they're getting all that type of ice time, it gets tough uh, when you don't have the depth, you know, to play when five on five, and they're going out there every third shift also five on five. So that's where that gets a little bit tough, but it's something that you have to play through, and uh, they say to be a good pro all the time, you have to learn to play tired and right. not make mistakes mentally, and that's where we have to get better as a team. Rob Nichols' injury has opened the door for Tanner Creel to start the last three games, and uh, having done both of Vermont and Boston College games and the Sacred Heart game uh, on WTIC. I thought Tanner was terrific in the first two games of that stretch. I thought he was brilliant against Vermont and just as good against Boston College. He was excellent in both games. Uh, he, you know, he played really well against Vermont. He really only let in two goals. Right. Uh, and then against Boston College, he was outstanding. He made big saves when he had to make them. Uh, and hey, against Sacred Heart, uh, were there a few goals he'd probably like to have back? Probably. Right. But at the same token, 
you know, we got outshot 32-25 in that game. So right. I, I'm not going to put that on. And Taylor a lot of Field. odd man rushes. There were. Them too. It was just a, a not a well played game by our team. So uh, I wouldn't put that on Tanner. You've got one more non-conference game Tuesday against Brown at the XL Center. Then it's strictly Hockey East. And um, tied for seventh in the standings. The goal is to finish in the top eight so you host a home series. And seven uh, you have, uh, of, the, of the games you have remaining, I think that's right, I think there's seven of them are against teams that are below you in the standings. So you really control your own destiny as to whether you can host a first round series or not. We do. It's going to be a good, tough stretch, though. Right. We have, uh, actually, Providence is is above us. Right. In Providence is two so, games, and then yeah. there's everybody at Merrimack and New Hampshire and people right. like that. But it's going to be, you know, Merrimack at Merrimack is always a tough game. That's a really, really hard place to play. Uh, you know, then we have two with Providence, right? And then we have two with Northeastern, who might be the hottest team in the country right now. They right. haven't lost, I think, in eight or nine games. You know, and then we'll play New Hampshire, but which is a play, tough place to play. It can too, be, right? yeah. yeah. You know, we're home and home with New Hampshire. The thing I don't want our team worrying about is where they fit. Like, don't worry about what place we're in right now. Right. Let's go play a great game against Merrimack when the time comes. You know, and then the next week, as far as hockey East goes, we'll have Providence. And let's play a great game against Providence and stop worrying about where we are in the standings because I think that's a mistake we made last year. Mm -hmm. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to finish in the top eight right. and we got caught up with that and we only took one point in our last you know, six games uh, and that cost us. So we just got to stay focused on, on putting the type of effort we had against BC. Right. Uh, when the time comes to play in the Hockey East games, Merrimack, we got to have that type of effort at Merrimack. We've got Kyle Houston coming up in our player spotlight. Uh, this is a young man who is, I think has played really well in recent weeks. What things does he bring to the blue line for you? You know, one of the things that uh, I take for, well, I took from Bill Belichick was... Uh, you know, well, he got beat. He did get weekend. beat, yeah. No, sorry, he does have six Super Bowl rings. Do you know that? We had, okay, two, we anyway. had two with the New York football But Giants. anyway, the thing he always says is, are you the same guy every day? It's like Joe D in the right. drive time in the afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. You're the same guy every day. You Most know, of fresh, the time. maybe yeah. not, but you are the same guy it's every day. It's another story. We don't have yeah. enough time for that. But Kyle Hewson is the same guy every day. Right. Whether it's a Monday practice, whether it's a Friday night game, a Sunday afternoon game, I know who Kyle Hewson right. is every time. He's the same reliable defenseman every single day. And that's the best compliment I could give him. That we can really count on him as a staff and as a team. Are you concerned that he's got a love of broadcasting? Not at all. Uh, depends yeah, who he gets paired up right, with. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Calf, thanks. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Joe. And as mentioned, we are delighted to be wel welcomed by number four, Kyle Houston, the senior defenseman. Kyle, welcome. Big media Thank week you. for you. Radio show with uh, Rich Coppola. Yep. Uh, our show here. This is good. Talk about your thoughts on the season as a whole. Obviously, um, the record maybe not where you guys would have liked it, but how do you think the team has progressed this year? I think we've progressed a lot. I think that uh, we had obviously a slow start early on, but through that we learned a lot and we tried to build our foundation and build upon that foundation. So I think that we're trending in the right direction as we go into the latter half of the season. I, so many injuries on the team this season, and you guys have really had a had a bond together over the last week and a half or so. Um, the D's not having as many problems as the front as the forwards, where there was one guy short yeah. uh, on the Brown game. But but when a team is impacted by injuries, tell tell the viewers a little bit about what you guys have to do to to kind of make sure that you don't let down, and you also don't try to do too much to make up for guys who weren't there. Yeah, I mean, every guy that is in the lineup is expected to contribute, and I think that every guy who is in the lineup can contribute uh, in a great way for our team. So, you know, every team faces injuries throughout the year, and it's something that you just have to deal with. You have to be mentally strong enough to uh, push through it, and guys just have to step up in their roles. Talk about your individual development. Obviously, you've been here through the whole Hockey East development, starting with your freshman year yeah. when you were still in Atlantic Hockey. What's it been like for you here? Uh, it's been great. I've, I've really enjoyed seeing the program uh, move up, and uh, to be a part of that has been something special for me, and uh, you know, I, I, the rest of the senior class as well. So I've really enjoyed my time um, as a UConn hockey player, and I, you know, I'm hoping that we go out on on a, you know, the highest note that we can. An exceptionally tall defenseman, 6'5". <laughs> 
What's the benefit to that size and maybe a drawback at being that big on the blue line? I think the benefit is my reach. Um, yeah, I have a longer reach than most of the guys, and right. so uh, I'm able to get my stick into positions where you know, some other shorter defensemen might not be able to. Uh, the drawback could be you know, the, the smaller guys, a little, little shiftier, uh, more fleet of foot. Uh, so that's just something that I have, to, I have to be positionally aware of to make sure that I'm not out of position um, and, and just in the best position possible to make my defensive plays. All right, let's get a little dirt on your blue line partners. If there was one guy, one partner on the blue line who you would be want to get trapped into a cave with because you know he would come to your assistance, who would that be? Derek Pratt. How come? Uh, Derek is... You know, he, he's not scared of anybody. He, uh, he's got a little bit of a temper sometimes. So if, if, he, if we were trapped together and there was somebody coming after us, I, I would really love Derek in my corner. All right, well, who's the guy who would cry like a baby and you'd have to rescue him? Oh, gosh. I don't want to get in trouble, but probably Miles Gendron. How come? Uh, you know, he's a, he's a young guy. Um, he talks a big game sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> I think when it comes down to it, I would have to be the one that would save him. And who on the blue line of the seven defensemen, who can pack away the most food? Who can pack away the most food? Probably uh, the big unit, Johnny Austin. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what we call him is the big unit? The big unit, yeah. Now, for those of you who might not know, uh, Kyle has a little bro broadcasting background. He worked with our friend Chris Jones on some WHUS UConn baseball broadcast. And your connection to baseball is a pretty interesting one. Your dad had a, had a terrific major league career. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my dad played in the major leagues for parts of 12 years from 88 to 2000. So I, I grew up uh, in a major league locker room, which was, you know, something that not every kid no. gets to experience. Um, and so and then once he, he stopped playing, he coached for a little bit in the minor leagues and then he started broadcasting for the Rockies. Did you ever think, uh, were you a baseball player as a kid growing up? I was, yeah. I, pitcher, I played, big, big yeah. left-handed pitcher? Uh, right handed okay. if, if I was left-handed, my dad probably wouldn't let me stop playing. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, I played baseball and hockey, um, and then it came down to where I kind of had to focus on one, and my passion was uh, more towards hockey, so I chose to focus on that. All right, here's your broadcast audition. It's Jeff Houston at the plate against Matt Harvey, two out, bottom of the ninth, tie game. Give us the play-by-play -play of what Jeff Houston would have done. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Houston steps up to the plate, and it's an 0-2 count against Matt Harvey. Harvey delivers and Houston strikes out. <laughs> the game's over. Perfect. Sorry, Dad. Uh, goals for the rest of the year. Obviously, we just talked about this with Coach. Getting in the top eight and hosting a Hockey East series would be a great accomplishment in the second year of the program. It would be a great accomplishment, and uh, we saw how it affected us last year a little bit when we were just you know right outside that home ice advantage, and I think uh, if we were able to get that home ice advantage and play in front of our home crowd, be in a, in a comfortable position. I think that would be uh, great for us heading into the playoffs. All right, Kyle Houston, number four, UConn defenseman. Kyle, thank you. Good luck the rest Thanks. of the year. That'll do it for us here on Center Ice. Don't forget the Huskies are home on Tuesday night against Brown. Tickets available at UConnTickets.com. If you can't get to the game, get to the radio. Rich Capola and I will have it on WTIC News Talk 1080 beginning at 645. Now for Kyle, for Coach Mike Cavanaugh, and for the best crew in video, the UConn video crew, I'm Jody Ambrosio. Thanks for watching this edition of Center Ice. We'll see you in the postseason.